My next guest has temporarily binned her bulletins and picked up the baton as part of what has to be the most gripping reality show of the year, Maestro. Everybody thinks Matthew is uh, cracking the whip, and he is. Show them. Energy, energy, energy. Don't stand like that, please. Keep still. This is nice. Oh my God, uh, role reversal, are you being nice? I think he thinks, oh, why can't you do it? You know, God, it's so difficult. Katie, I think you're the most improved conductor this week. It's very, very good indeed. Thank you. Well, she's back in front of that judging panel once again this evening, so how's she feeling? Please welcome Katie Durham. <laughs> Now, I have to say, A, I'm hugely jealous, because I'd love to have had a go at doing that. B, relieved, my goodness me, they don't pull their punches, do they? They don't, and there's so much more to it than any of us realised as well. But it, when it goes right, it is the most amazing feeling. And I just got a little bit tingly, actually, watching that clip mm. again, because the music and the choir and the orchestra playing so beautifully, it's... It's, it's like nothing I've ever done before. Now, I always knew you were a bit of a musician. I seem to remember knowing that you played an instrument. I, I scraped a fiddle badly at school. But not <laughs> since then? So no, you played not, since, since. not since then, no. Did that help in any way? Uh, I think it meant that I'd had some experience of what it was like to be conducted, although obviously at a very amateur sort of level. Um, but no, not really. <laughs> yeah. How competitive are you all together? There's a team of you there. I mean, then you're all in the business, so it's a fairly competitive business. Are you quite... I think we've all we've all got the bug and we're all loving it and we've all got so into it that I think we don't want to leave oh. you know and we and we all would love to stay and so from that point of view we'd like to stay in and we're competitive but of course like whenever you work closely with people you make friends and of course yeah. we don't want anybody else to leave and we all get on very well so it's not competitive in that nasty backstabbing way at all but how no, did it <laughs> <not much>. <laughs> <laughs> how did it differ from what you expected uh, I think that I didn't realize quite how much um, it was going to be not just about spinning plates and doing lots of things at once, which it is. I mean, it's, it's that ability to tap your head and yeah. rub your tummy at the same time, you know, which I was bad at before and I'm not sure I'm much better at now. But it's also so much about inspiring these wonderful musicians and kind of getting the confidence together that even though we've never done it before, they're still going to look at us and say, right, come on then. But How do you want us to play this? Do they? Because there's always that thing about conducting that nobody's watching them anyway. The orchestra's going to do its bit. Did they really do what your hands were telling them to they do? They did. Terrifyingly, Alan. And they did, <laughs> yeah, which, believe me, in the early stages for all of us, it meant the big thing which we, I think, all found, I certainly found, was, come on, why aren't you going faster? You know, and they were, I, I didn't realise that, of course, my arms were actually getting slower. In fact, they did point that out. They said, well, if you've actually beat the time faster, Katie, we play faster for you, <laughs> you know. But, uh, the, one was... of the things that interested me was, we all, I mean, I remember in our local library, there used to be an LP in Tyledam with a baton attached to it, and you could take it home from the local music library and conduct in your own sitting room. <laughs> uh, and, and you just think conducting is really beating time to the music and you can do it with passion. But they were saying things about you're not using your left hand. You were talking about doing this. Yeah. You're not using your left and I thought, oh, goodness me, you really do have to be kind of ambidextrous. I know. Somebody put it very well. They said that your right hand, which you're beating time with generally, with the baton, is, is the grammar, and the left hand's the poetry. Now, oh. I don't know if I'm much beyond Pam Ayres yet, but, you know, <laughs> but, but I, I think it's, you know, that's a lovely way of putting it. You know, you're, you're meant to sort of do the, the dynamic and the feeling yeah. and, 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 you know, the mood, if you like, with your left hand, and, and with your right hand a bit, but the right hand's got to be absolutely steady with the time. So. How much time are you devoting to it during the course oh, of the week? Alan, um, every spare minute, really. Really? Yeah, we're getting a lot of training from the lovely Matthew as my mentor, as yeah. you saw in the, uh, in the film there, and we get a lot of time with pianists and with amateur orchestras and so on. About, I don't know, it, it racks up the hours, like a good 20 hours a week. Gosh, and you're you know. still doing the day job, because they were being very unkind about, you know, you're not presenting the news, they don't pull their punches. And yeah. Jane Asher telling them not to act, which I thought was a bit I rotten. Know. But you, they were a bit unkind about you wobbling and what you were wearing, and I know, you took I it know. on the chin. I think you, you, um, you agree to do these things and be judged. You have to let them judge you, don't you? It's, it's difficult But were you sometimes. a bit upset? Uh, honestly. There's been, honestly, Alan. Um, there have been, I think we've all had our moments when we thought, I can't believe I've got to stand here and take that. But actually, you know what? They're the experts and we're mm. not, mm. so you have to take it on board. And, and you know... Some people like the wiggle, some people don't like the wiggle, yeah. you know. I've tried it both ways now. <laughs> 
No, I, I just like watching you in whatever you're in, dear. It's fine by me. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll watch you conduct. I'll watch you conduct a bus. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly. I think sometimes it might look as if I am conducting a bus, sadly, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, I shall still be envious, and we, we wish you luck uh, oh, thank tonight. You. And, thank and, you. It's and opera tonight. Wish you luck. Opera. Yes, we get our very own tenors. It's oh, fantastic. well, that'll be wonderful. Yeah. They'll enjoy that. Uh, the, the news carries on. Briefly, you know, we've just been having this debate about younger newsreaders versus old. Oh, I'll ask one who's already in the business what she feels about it. What do you think? I mean, isn't there room for both? I think there's absolutely room for both. And, I mean, you know, none of us are getting any younger. I'm hoping it's going to stay that way, Alan. Because <laughs> you were, as I seem to remember, the youngest newsreader at 27 you were when you started. I think that they, they, they worked that out. Yes, I was 27. I don't know if I was actually the youngest. I certainly am sure that now somebody's broken that record, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But at the time, there was, some, there was some fuss made about it. But, you know, you're doing a job and you try and do it well and you try and do it professionally and you hope that, that the camera is kind, you know. But I think there's, as you said in your, in but your they discussion do earlier, you know, I think there was room for everybody because... Yeah. Everybody watches. It's a whole range of people out there, so they don't want to just see one kind of person on telly, do they? But looking good is a double-edged sword, because if you look good, they say you get the job. But then, if you look good, they tend to forget you've got a first at Cambridge. You know, so yeah, you know, I did have you. Oh, you're so kind. It was nothing <laughs> like that. But um, oh, you, you know, your you publicist know. is very good at saying it was. <laughs> <laughs> I should give him give him a rise. I think I will. <laughs> I will. Um, oh well, you know, it's an old, it's an it's an age old problem, isn't it? But um, I think we've got a bit beyond worrying about. Oh, can you be, you know, half reasonable yeah. looking and able to string a sentence together? I think we. I think you plenty manage. of good examples out there, I think. You manage. And but reading or cue, as we know, isn't just reading or cue. It's a skill in itself. But bless your heart. Good of you to come in. Good luck for tonight. Oh, thank you. I'll be hanging yes. on the edge of my seat and hoping you're still in there. Do you know, do you know the song I've got? Yeah. After that serious piece of Mozart last yeah. week, I've got the Just One Cornetto ad. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'll be singing along. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Katie Derham. <laughs> That's it for today. Tomorrow, the woman who spent 30 years of her life in a bulletproof vest. That's Kate Adie. The new stars of ITV's, ITV One's Jane Austen season, Jemima Rupert and Elliot Cowan join us. And come here, there's more. Comedian Jimmy Cricket and his Irish sweetheart, Gloria Honeyford. See you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Bye-bye. <laughs>